I was actually going to review this game later on this year, but I'm still kind of in a racing game type of mood, so I decided to up Flat Out 3 on my two playlist. That's mainly because I know the first three games in the series are fantastic, because I include Ultimate Carnage as 3, but I haven't heard anything positive about the officially named third game. I had played it a few weeks ago for about an hour before work, and after just one race, I knew I had to review it. It's bad. Not terrible in an unplayable sort of way, but just too bland to bother batting an eye at. Being that this is a racing game, there's no real story other than picking a character, a vehicle, a game mode, and then racing. Unlike the previous games in the Flat Out series, there's not really any sort of career mode where you're trying to race in circuits and earn more money to upgrade your car. In fact, there's no currency system in place at all, and the upgrade system is pretty freaking bare bones. So first off, let's start with the racing. To start, I chose the basic racing option, which lets you choose between one of six areas, of which each typically has four different tracks in them. Well, other than the mountain area, which has six. But one thing of note, only half of these tracks are actually unique. The other half are just reversed versions of them. That's right, half of the tracks in the standard racing mode are just flipped tracks. Going off of this, there's only truly 13 tracks to race on. Okay, technically, there's more of them in other game modes, but the real meat of the game is in the standard racing, so I'm sticking to at 13 real tracks. You then get to choose a vehicle. Unlike the previous outings, Flat Out 3 gives you full access to any unlocked car. You can mix and match classes at will, since races are no longer class-based, so slower, more powerful beaters will pull up alongside the sleeker, faster tuner models. But again, since there's no currency, customizing your car is as simple as choosing a preset option. I don't know if these presets actually do anything. For reasons I'll state shortly, I don't think they really do. After you pick your vehicle of mayhem, you get a large selection of playable characters, some of them being parodies of real and fictional characters. Don't let that little blurb on the bottom of the screen deceive you. The descriptions are only something to read for a few seconds. Characters don't behave differently in races, there aren't any cutscenes that show rivalries, and there's not any speech from any character during the race. It's literally a selection to see who is in the driver's seat in those rare times you get a glimpse. After all this unnecessary crap, you finally start a race. And it's completely underwhelming. Gone are the dramatic crashes and wrecks, with debris all over the road and the occasional explosion making you say holy freaking crap. Gone is the immense sense of speed. Gone is the amazing soundtrack. Hell, gone are the enemy AI personalities, since no health bar is ever shown with their mugs on it. Now? It's just a subpar experience overall. But let me explain how this game dug itself into a hole and just kept digging. For one, you may notice that you start with a full Nitro bar now. This is actually kind of welcome. Nitro isn't earned as easily as the games prior to Flat Out 3, so being able to start with a full bar is nice. There is also a second bar underneath this one, which will fill up with Red Flame. This is called the Super Move Meter, which charges when smacking opponents and grabbing airtime. Once this is full, you can press a button and be completely invulnerable for about 3 seconds, and any enemy that you strike will crash. No, it's not as useful as it sounds, since it's over within a few mere seconds. If it lasted maybe twice as long, I would have used it more. But as it stands, it was a wasted feature. Oh, and it slows down the game when you use it. Why not increase the time you have it, and let you run at full speed? It's an interesting mechanic with poor implementation. So anyway, the races. They are no longer races where you can go out of bounds. Instead, you are going from checkpoint to checkpoint, and crossing checkpoints will get you maybe a 20% boost in your turbo meter. With this, you can take a few extra shortcuts if you find them, and not worry about the game penalizing you for making your own road. I did like this feature as well. But the problem is that this racing game bears the flat out name, and as such, you would be expecting high octane thrills and spills. And those aren't to be found here. Yeah, you can bump into your opponents, but unlike the massive wrecks that can be caused in previous games, any intent to cause damage to your enemies will result in what I would consider to be a simple fender bender. No matter what vehicle or tuning configuration I've tried, I've only ever done 1% damage to the other guy, according to the game at least. Only once or twice did I get anything higher than that, and that's usually because I smashed them using full speed and head on. But again, that's rare. 
even physically striking the other cars, there's a noticeable lack of oomph. It's really disappointing. Because of this, there's no real point in using anything other than the faster vehicles. Speed will win over strength. And if you wonder if your car will get wrecked quicker, well, don't worry about it. Using Nitro heals your car damage. You heard that right. If you use your speed boost, the damage done to your vehicle will be repaired. This is so freaking stupid because it completely nullifies most damage that you could possibly do to your enemies. Trying to wreck them? Better stay on it because 1% of damage will heal up in seconds. Yes, cars can still be permanently wrecked in a race, but it's so rare it's almost not worth mentioning it. The enemy AI isn't always the brightest either. Really the best example for the AI is on the one reversed of Vienna map. There's a massive staircase that you have to drive up, and there are a few boards that function as ramps. Most of the times the enemy AI will get stuck trying to drive up this. It will drive into a wall, respawn, and repeat. It's actually the funniest thing I've really watched in this game, and if I wasn't actively trying to win the race, I would have just sat there and watched. It's really pathetic. And that's the basic racing. Really bland, lackluster, etc. But guess what? There's a bunch of other modes to mention, so I'll talk about them quickly. There's a challenge mode, where there's 50 objectives that you must complete. The first is simply to get first on a track. Pass. Moving on. Next up is Splat Out, which is a simple drive to run over as many zombies as possible. If you can earn enough points, you unlock the next track. Although some of the tracks are the normal race circuits, there are special ones that are specifically for this mode, which are typically small and open, and quite frankly boring after the two minutes that you drive on them. It's a mode that could have been fun if fleshed out a bit more, but at its current state, again, meh. Off-road is a stunt-like mode, in which you get to choose a vehicle and attempt to get airtime, drift, and the such, in the running for getting the most points possible. The tracks feel a bit wider, which is needed because the control in this mode is just horrendous. Everything is way too slippery, and I get it that it's supposed to be off-road, but damn it's hard to control your vehicle when you're constantly hitting motocross-style bumps. Next up is Night Shift, which is identical to the normal racing minus a few things. For one, you only race against one opponent. But more obviously, the tracks are now covered in water due to heavy rain, and the sun is down. The rain is supposed to make you slide around more, but I didn't notice it. We come to speed, which is fairly obvious in what this mode entails. You can choose either a normal vehicle, or a Grand Prix style car. This mode tries to be a bit more simulation oriented since the vehicles are faster and will slide around corners if brakes aren't applied. The next mode, Monster Truck, is just like the rest of the game, not as fun as it should be. You control a larger, ridiculous looking version of a normal cars and have to complete objectives. That's fine, but there's a trick to this. For some reason, these things are incredibly fragile. This was the only mode in which I actually succumbed to a wreck. Tell me what's wrong with this. I only ever destroyed my ride while I was driving a mother flippin' monster truck. Yeah, I said mother flippin'. I'm trying to decrease the amount of cursing I do. It probably won't last long. Next up is Battle Arena, which is the demo derby style mode of the previous games. Just like everything else, it's not any fun. Again, with absolutely no feedback to the crashes, it just feels like wasted potential. And check this out here. I'm not even pressing anything and I'm moving around. My hands were literally off the controller. I even picked up my phone to try recording this, but unfortunately this phenomenon ended before I was able to start recording. Oh well. There's also the big battle mode, which is identical to Battle Arena, but with 24 tour cars instead of 11. Speaking of, 11 is such a random number. Why not make it one more? Races and demo derbies have 11 total vehicles, including yourself. I just don't get it. Only one more game mode to mention, the Stuntman mode. This would normally be like the bowling, long jump, high jump, and modes like that from previous games, but again, it's a bare bones version of that. The first one is just a simple event where you launch your driver above a windmill and try to land on the target. After a few attempts, I just gave up. Maybe it was overall frustration with the game as a whole, but I just was not enjoying myself. So that's the gameplay and the modes, but there's still a few more things I need to mention, because I noted them when I was playing it. Really, it all comes down to me thinking the game was just not properly finished. Let me mention a few things about that. In the speed mode, on the top of the screen is a counter for Rex and Rent. But is it me, or do both of them look a bit cut off at the right hand side? Second weird thing I noticed is that the achievements are even broken. I get an achievement for being wrecked by the passing train, just by sideswiping it. I didn't crash. But I got it anyway. Maybe it's just worded wrong, I don't know. Third, the loading bar when launching a race doesn't work right. Take a look at this. Isn't this a basic programming thing? I really don't know, but I feel like if you can't get a loading bar to work, then don't include it! Just put like a little rotating circle or something. And lastly, check this out. I 
I don't even th think I really need to mention anymore. And finally, where the hell is the soundtrack of the previous games? Instead of the awesome licensed songs that you got to listen to while causing debauchery, now you get generic rock. It's not awful, but it's still not as great as the prior games. This was sorely missed when playing this game, as it would have made it at least a little bit more entertaining. And that's Flat Out 3. Just do yourself a favor and don't play it. It's a shame that the Flat Out name was applied to it, but I gotta wonder why Bugbear didn't create it themselves. That's probably where the game failed, but either way, it's bad. There's a ton of gameplay options, but none of them are exciting enough to warrant a look. Again, pass on this one, even if it's free. It's playable, but why would you want to? Final score? 5 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.